In today's video, we're gonna be changing the spark plugs on this 2014 Acura TL. So this is my sister's car. Uh, I just have a basic tool kit here. I'm just gonna change the plugs for her because this thing has, it's in kilometers, that's from Canada, but it has 180,000 kilometers on it, which works out to be about 110,000 miles. So this thing comes with iridiums from the factory. I just took one out just so I could check it to see what they kind of looked like and it didn't look the greatest. So that's why I decided to replace them. So you can see here on the porcelain, it's got this burnt area and they have definitely seen better days. So up to you guys. These ones, like I said, they are iridium plugs. These are pretty pricey uh, to purchase. I ended up finding iridium NGKs at AutoZone for about $9.50 each um i was looking at some of the places online a lot of places try to sell them as a pack of four six cylinder you're gonna need six so i didn't want to buy eight plugs and just you know toss two because i was gonna buy them off rock auto but i ended up getting for 950 each um, i'll link them down in the description below if you guys want to get the same ones i got again these are iridiums they should be pre-gapped but i am going to verify the gap as well with just one of these little slide tools so just want to double check it I'll show you guys the whole process. I took the first one out, but it's not that bad. So there's these little clips here uh, where the wire loom actually clips onto. So you can see like that, you just lift this tab and this tab and it just slides off these posts. So you slide it off. Then you're going to have on your coil pack, you're going to have your clip. So the clip's pretty self-explanatory. You just squeeze the little tab right here. So you squeeze it. It releases the latch that you can see right there, pops off, and then you got this 10 millimeter castle nut on top holding the coil pack. You slide it out, and off it comes. Then you're gonna need a 5 8 socket. I'll also link down below. I don't have it here, but it makes it much easier and nicer using the tool. I actually used it on not that ram, but a different ram. It's magnetic and it's got a swivel here. It makes plug changes much nicer instead of the rubber one that I have here but um, this is what I'm using for this I guess I got this uh, six inch extension and the 5 8 socket and you're gonna need a 10 mil and that's pretty much it so I'll work through this I'll show you guys the process these front ones you don't have to take off any of the engine shield um, you could if you wanted to but um, this plastic here I don't have to back here it looks like I'm gonna have to remove this one and to get this one out looks like I have to lift this one and this one as well so once we get to that I'll show you guys that process but let's finish these three in the front and then we'll move on one other thing as you guys will notice i have a air nozzle here not exactly the most ideal one but i'm working with what i have so once i loosen the plug before i actually take it out like so i'll loosen it kind of get it going but not completely unthread it so i still leave it with a few threads on I take the air nozzle and I put it inside where the cylinder is because you don't want to drop any sand or dirt that may have fallen in there into your cylinder. It'd be the worst thing you could do. So I leave the plug with a few threads attached and then I put compressed air through there and blow any dirt or soot in there so that it's not falling into your cylinder. So that's why I have this up here. Like I said, if you had just like a normal air chuck, like with a nozzle, it'd probably be a little bit better, but this works too if it's something similar that you have. Take the compressed air, just make sure that all the dirt is out of there if anything is in there, and then we can continue to take the plug out. Okay, so I know a lot of guys don't like using this style of gapping tool on an Iridium plug, but I'm not necessarily gapping it. I just want to double check it. It's supposed to be at 44 thou, and you can see there it actually is pretty dang close. So looks like they're good. So I'm just going to verify them as we go throughout. So this one is at 44 thou, so we should be good to go. So I'm going to start dropping them in. Pretty straightforward. Also, huge controversy on putting uh, anti-seize on spark plug threads. 
Uh, if you guys want, go ahead, check out the NGK website. That's kind of an old school thing. They actually put a nice new coating on these and they actually say don't use anti-seize on these and that the new coating that they have applied to modern plugs uh, doesn't require any coating. So believe what you will, but I'm not gonna be putting anything on them. Those ones have over 100,000 on them and came out like butter. So like I said, Go check out the NGK website if you guys want to argue about any seas on them, but these are ready to go. It's gapped, and uh, I'm gonna go ahead and throw it in. Also, you might want to insert it in your tool instead of just dropping the plug in, because depending on how it lands, you could potentially close the gap. So I prefer to put it in like so and start tightening it like this instead of just dropping the plug into the bore. Okay, so our plug is tight. We'll take our spark plug socket out and reinsert our coil pack. Kind of have to mess with this loom thing. I'm going to plug it back in with our clip until we hear it click, like so. Seat it down. Our 10 mil castle nut can go back on. And let's tighten up our 10 mil bolt there. Tighten up our 10 mil nut snug it down and we're on to the next so here we go this one looks like it's in spec as well got 44 right there so we'll go ahead and throw it in Third plug checks out as well, and let's throw this one in. All right, so we got our three coil packs in, everything's tight, plugs are tight, three 10 mils are tight, and now we can slide our loom back over there and click that down. Now let's move on to the rear three. Okay, so this, I don't know if yours is gonna come off as easy as this one, but it looks like it's kind of just hanging out here. And these kind of just pop out of the way. So I'll just set that to the side. There's one here. So that pops out of there like that. And that's about as much as I need to do. And then we get access to the three there. So those look like a little bit more fun for sure. Could take this off. I don't know if I need to. I might just pop it up out of our way. Just give us a bit more room since it comes out easily. And we'll get to work. So similar deal on this one. Actually, this one you don't have to move the wire loom. It doesn't look quite as fun, but you don't have to remove this plastic wire loom to get to it. So you can just get straight clear access to the 10 mils and to the wire clips. So let's go ahead and get it done. Just went ahead and cracked the 10 mil nut loose. So you can get your hands in here like this. There's the 10 mil, so set it to the side so we don't drop it. We'll pop the clip off. So the clip is off. And should be able to get our coil pack out. And she is out. Like so. Now this is the more fun part. Probably getting this in here to get the spark plug out. Might have to play a game with the extension. Or if you have that tool, which I don't have on deck, this is probably going to be a lot easier. So I'm going to drop the socket in first. And then I'm going to go ahead and attach my 6 inch extension. And then I will put this on. So it's all possible, it's just probably going to be easier if you have that magnetic one with the swivel on it. There we go. So same deal, we're going to get this loose, let it hang on by a few threads, get the compressed air in there just to make sure there's no dirt, and then we'll remove the plug. So you're gonna have to, like I said, if you got this traditional one, 
You're gonna have to take your six inch extension off because it hits the firewall. And you're gonna have to take the plug out with just a socket like that. Man, oh man, that one does not look nice. The gap looks tiny on that too. Let's check it just out of curiosity. Well, maybe not. Still at 44, but this plug has seen better days for sure. So we'll check the new one. So far, they've all been gapped at 44, and uh, we'll throw the new one in. Yep, she's bang on the money there. So we're gonna have to do the reverse. We're gonna put this in the socket. Get this in here. Lower this in here as gently as possible. And then we'll have to put our extension on. And then our ratchet. We'll snug our plug down. This is probably gonna be the worst one, honestly. The other two look like we got a bit more room because we don't have this bracket here that we have to deal with. So it should be the reverse. We'll pull this up. We'll have to take our extension out of our socket. And then out comes our socket. I wish I had my tool, but I don't have it here. So, coil pack back in. And, throw that on the stud. Connect our wire connector. Should hear a click. There it is. And we'll reinstall our 10 mil nut. And snug it down with our ratchet. Okay, so that cylinder's done. We got two more to go. I'll open this up. And get my there we go, then I'm gonna get my fingers in here, loosen this 10 mil nut, take it out. If you need to, you can use a screwdriver to get the clip off. So I'm kind of just using the screwdriver to press down on the clip and then just to kind of slide it off. These things have been never been removed, so they are on there. Here we go, here's the coil pack. And this one should be a little easier, I hope. So I'm gonna put this in here. Can't quite get it in there. You have to disassemble it. Again, if you had the other tool, you wouldn't have to do any of that, but I digress. Okay. Got a ratchet on here. We'll loosen this one out of here. Okay, we'll get it most of the way loose, and then we'll put some compressed air in there. plug same thing 44 insert it into here slide it in take our extension and we'll tighten the spark plug down okay so hopefully you guys can see that there you can see the three coil packs right there they're not shielded by anything. You can see the 10 mil nut there with the clip. And if I move along, you can see there's the last one there all the way to the driver's side. 
so they're all accessible it's not uh, not the most fun project but you can get to them uh, just using a simple hand tools like you see there and everything's tight so we can put the covers back on all right so the only thing left to do is to put back in all our engine covers I think that's pretty self-explanatory I'm sure you guys can handle that part on your own so just put all these back in here and just push all the push pins back also everything that we use to get the job done including the spark plugs that socket that i was mentioning that would be handy uh, i will link that down in the description below so you guys can get the stuff to get this job done easier so there we go the covers are all back installed they simply just push into place but if you guys enjoyed this content please give it a thumbs up for me check out the other videos on the channel if you guys are into jdm stuff we've got a lot of s2000 content and a bunch of other automotive related content also consider subscribing thanks for watching guys and we'll see you guys on the next video